everyone. So like I just mentioned in the lecture, I'm now going to show you how to build the body of your gargoyle or how to get the basic foundation for it. So whenever you are working with clay, the first thing you want to do is cover your surfaces. Clay is messy and it can get everywhere. So like I have on the table right now, I have a tarp. Um, I'm wearing an apron. If you don't have an apron, just wear clothes that you're okay with getting messy. If you have long hair, I suggest putting it up because you definitely don't want clay in your hair. After you have all that done, then you're ready to start. So like in the lecture, the first thing that you're going to want to do is build the body of your gargoyle. And to do that, you're going to start out with a pinch pot. So you're going to take uh, some clay and you're going to form it into a ball. So kind of just rolling it in your hand and patting it until it gets into almost like a ball form. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then once you have your spear shape, you're going to take your thumb, like in the second step, and you're going to push down in the center. You don't want to push all the way through. You want to give yourself about a quarter of an inch of wiggle room. So, like I said, you push your thumb in, and you're going to take your four fingers, kind of like this, like how the hand was shown in the lecture, and you're going to hold it in your palm. When making a pinch pot, it's all about a rhythm, uh, twisting and pinching, and you really want to figure out what that rhythm is. So if you're new to this, I'd suggest rolling up a couple of balls of clay and trying it out a couple different ways because the way that you pinch will affect the shape you get, whether it's really wide or you get like a really narrow pinch pot. So I would definitely suggest rolling a couple of balls of clay first to kind of get a feel for it and that way you can get your desired body for your gargoyle. So like I said, you want to put your thumb in the middle and take your four fingers and start pinching. You want to start from the bottom, slowly working your way up. No pinching and turning as you go. And like I said, just working your way up. So today I'm going to be going off of a gargoyle that I made whenever I was in high school. If you're having a hard time figuring out what type of gargoyle you want to make, or you can't think of an idea of like how you want it to look, one thing that I was told in high school was to just combine two animals together to make your gargoyle. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense because gargoyles are a mixture of animals, humans, mythical creatures. So if you're having a hard time like coming up with an idea of how you want your gargoyle to look, you can just think of two creatures that you think would be good together to make a unique looking gargoyle. In high school, the one that I have right here, I took a chinchilla and a shark. So you really can just take any two animals you want and put them together. All right, so once you get kind of like your desired shape of how you want the body to look, kind of like that, you're next gonna move on to your head. So typically heads are smaller than the body, but gargoyles come in many different shapes, sizes, some look very funky, some look like a normal animal. It's kind of how you want to interpret it. So I have already pre-made the head for my gargoyle. Like I said, I'm kind of just going off of this guy. Um, so I made another pinch pot. And the thing is that whenever you make another pinch pot for your head, you want to make sure that the bottom of your head and your body uh, are the same size. So that way, whenever you slip and score, um, well, you connect the two, they're touching. So that way they can, so that way they can connect. So with my gargoyle, he has kind of like half a pinch pot head. So I'm actually going to cut, uh, with my clay knife, this in half, like that. And then it's a little bit too thick on the bottom, so I'm kind of going to shape it also while I'm here. Two, kind of like that pointy shark head that he has. Kind of like that. Okay, so once I have it how I want my head, that's whenever we're going to slip and score. So like I said, anything that you attach onto your gargoyle, you need to slip and score. So what that means is that you take something that you can do uh, 
jagged lines with. So kind of just scraping the surface. You really want to make sure it's good and you want to do that on both of the pieces that you are attaching. So like this and then slip is just clay that you water down. So what you're going to do is you're kind of just going to tap that on. Some people like to use um, just a brush they're not afraid to get dirty to kind of keep from ruining those lines I just made. And you're going to place that on top like this and then what you're going to do is you're going to smooth it out so you can start pushing these forms together like this and just smoothing up combining them you want to do this on the outside and the inside if you are able to do that Once you have smoothed out your head and your body, um, you kind of have like a little bit of an indent there. And so you want to take some more clay. You want to keep your clay in a bag to keep it nice and moist. And you want to take a little bit of clay and roll out a coil. And you're going to attach that where that seam is that you combined in both the head and the body. Okay, once you have your coil all rolled out, I like to just go back in and score it. So after I score my coil, I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna score my gargoyle around that seam. Like that, and then again, I'm gonna take some more slip and kind of just put it on like so. And then we're just gonna put that all around the part where we attach the head and the body. And then you're just gonna smooth that out on the bottom and top. And that will help, well that will just give that uh, part where you attached it more strength so it doesn't crack or break. Okay, so once that's all smoothed out, you finally have your head and your body attached. What you want to do is you want to make a small hole at the bottom of your gargoyle, especially if you don't have a big opening in, uh, for your mouth, because like I said, you want to make your gargoyle hollow and you need a hole at the bottom so the air can have a place to escape whenever it's being fired. And remember, you just want that mouth um, to have a hole to make it a gargoyle. Otherwise, you are making a grotesque. So like we talked about. So there's a hole at the bottom now. And our body and head are all formed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start adding details. So one thing that I would suggest if you are making um, fine details, like right here I made a wing to put on him. I will make those beforehand or make those a little bit earlier. That way you can set them off to the side and they can get a little bit harder because if they're too soft and too flimsy, like this wing would have been a little bit too flimsy whenever I attached it on, um, it won't stay right or I might want to like just like fall over, make it beforehand, set it off to the side and let it firm up a little bit before adding it because it'll make it a little bit easier to attach and it'll make it stay more. So whenever we're attaching again we're just going to slip and score. So we're scoring the back of him because that's where I'm going to attach the wing. Then I'm going to score the back of the wing as well because remember you score both things that you are attach, well, that you're attaching to, add a little bit of slip, and smooth it out. Okay, so this is, so this is it, well this is not all the way it, but these are the basic things that you need to know whenever you are making your gargoyle. So just remember, 
Make sure you got girls hollow so it wouldn't explode in a kiln. Make sure that there's a hole in the bottom so the air has somewhere to escape. Make sure there's also a hole at the top because remember we're making gargoyles and not grotesque so that water needs somewhere to shoot out of. Um, make sure that whatever you attach, so flip and score all that um, before, well, before you attach it. And then, like I said, if you're adding the head and the body together, there might, there's probably going to be a weak spot, so you want to roll up a coil, slip and score, and kind of just smooth it out to build that clay back up so it's a stronger bond. But other than that, I hope you guys have a fun time creating these gargoyles, and I hope you guys stay safe. Thanks!